Today, the spotlight moves on a gadget that's often overlooked but plays a critical role in our daily practice, the dental curing light. Few important pointers as we move ahead. Not all lights are the same. They come with different specifications and capabilities. Proper maintenance is the key to ensuring the longevity and effectiveness of your curing light. Angle and distance affects the irradiance received. During bulk filling or curing, it's crucial to prioritize the health of your curing light to achieve optimum results. Now, let's talk about safety. Did you know that the maximum blue light health hazard occurs within the 420 to 460 nanometer wavelength range? Yes, the visible light spectrum. Keeping this health hazard in mind, now if I tell you curing lights are medical devices and the use of unregulated and untested medical device on a patient should be regarded as in vivo testing on a patient who hasn't given you the informed consent. Will you still go and choose a cheaper yet untested, unheard XYZ brand of curing light devices from manufacturers and suppliers who give throwaway discounts just so that you buy this? For all those who believe in looking away from what's happening while supposedly curing the resin, remember this. Even the best curing light, if used improperly, will not cure the resin. So, in a three second exposure, if you miss the target for one second, it is equivalent to 33 less energy. On the brighter side, Proper light curing techniques can double your bond strengths, leading to better outcomes for your patients. So, always wear eye protection, stabilize the tip and closely monitor the curing process to ensure optimum results. Stay tuned for part 2. Don't forget to share it. Don't forget to save it. Take care.